What's up, writers? So we know from both from research and from our own experience that reading in print and reading on screen um, are substantially different. And so reading in the digital ecosystem is a lot different than how we maybe normally think about reading. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is what are some of the strategies to approach reading in this kind of complex, dynamic world of discourse. So let's first start with a couple of terms. I'm going to first start um, with this term, discourse. And discourse um, is kind of a fancy word for the kind of raw stuff of writing. Uh, what a rhetorical interaction does is it produces discourse. Um, the technical definition uh, for discourse is simply language in action. It may help to know that it comes from the Latin word discursus, and that means running to and from. So it's essentially what is between a speaker and an audience. And so again, right, it's the stuff of writing. Um, it could be singular or plural. Um, so it could be kind of one discourse, like this right now, or it could be talking about discourse in the abstract um, or discourses in the abstract having lots of different rhetorical interactions. So um, in the digital world, what we know uh, is that discourse is both multi-generic, meaning that it is in many different genres, and it's multimodal, many, meaning that it's in many different modes. Remember, modes um, are the uh, facilities or the faculties we use um, to understand a piece of text. So we might think about um, sound as a mode, visual as a mode, um, text as a mode. Um, and many of those texts in the digital world have all of those in it. So the other um, phrase that, or excuse me, the other concept um, that is important for today is this idea of the ecosystem. Um, so discourse um, exists in an ecosystem. And when we're talking about ecosystems, obviously this is a term that is borrowed um, from biology, from environmental studies to describe the complex dynamics of the natural world and humans within it. But um, this metaphor is also used to describe discourse in the current moment. So why ecosystem? What does it mean that something is in an ecosystem? Well, a few things about both um, ecosystems of discourse and also kind of ecosystems in the natural world. Um, so one is that an ecosystem, things in an ecosystem are networked, meaning they're connected to each other. Um, and so the other thing um, that is that describes an ecosystem is that it has complex interactions between elements. So in the digital ecosystem of discourse, or the discursive ecosystem, we have interactions between people, um, between just one-on-one -on -one or between multiple different types of groups. But one of the interesting things about the digital ecosystem is that we also have rhetorical in, um, interactions that are mediated or uh, by machines that are sometimes participating in that discourse. So if you think about things like machine learning um, or Twitter bots um, and things like that, the, 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 the machinery that we're using actually is shaping and participating in the discourse, which makes it even more complex. Um, because of that, uh, because these rhetorical interactions um, are happening and they're also kind of this read-write way, is that we're not just writing in a digital ecosystem, we're also reading at the same time. So many uh, people talk about how we live in a write-read culture where we're doing both of these at the same time in digital discourse. Um, the other thing that we want to remember about any ecosystem, um, especially that of uh, the ecosystem of discourse is that is dynamic, meaning it is constantly evolving and changing based on external circumstances, based on the technology that we're using, based on trends that are going on. So um, this is constantly changing and leading to a lot of complex interactions. So because of all of these complex interactions, hopefully you can realize that just reading in a straightforward way that we used to or just kind of going on autopilot is not going to be the most effective way. It's not really going to help us kind of cut through the complexity um, and the amount of information and all of these rhetorical interactions in an ecosystem. So what we need then is a different body of strategies, um, which I like to call an ecological approach to reading, that is taking all of these things about the context 
metrics that we're reading in into account. Um, so here are some strategies for actually how to go about that that I offer to you. So the first thing that you probably want to do um, when you are reading really in any environment, um, but especially in a digital environment, is to vary your strategies. Reading is not one thing. We don't read an email in the same way we read a news article. Um, it's not the same way that we read a textbook or the same way we read a novel. A lot of students um, come to, into my classes with this idea that they're reading wrong, that there's one right way to read. And often this is one of the messages that we get in school, that this is the way that you have to read something. Um, this is the strategy, this is the annotations that you have to do, and that we're often reading, um, you know, that we often think that we should read everything in the same way. That is actually a bad reading strategy, not a good one. Uh, we want to shift our reading strategies based on the context that we're reading. It's actually good to change your reading strategies um, for every text that you encounter. So um, if the trick is to strategize based on the situation, how do you do that? Well, here's a, a little framework. The first thing that you want to think about is you. Um, and you want to think about why are you reading? What do you um, want to get out of reading? So you want to think about what is your purpose? And we often have different purposes for reading. Um, sometimes we need information. Sometimes we're reading a story for entertainment. Sometimes we're reading to be persuaded. Sometimes um, we are reading to refute something, etc. So there's many different ways and reasons that we are reading. So we want to think about what the reason we're reading um, before we actually start reading to see how might we adjust our strategies. The other thing that we want to think about is how are we going to use it? So if we're reading something just for information, if we're having a conversation with our friends and we want to just kind of look up who played who in a movie, um, that's going to be a different reading experience than if we are given um, a really long, complicated text and we're told that we're going to have to write a piece on it. Or that's going to be different than if we're reading a textbook and realize that we're studying for an exam. So what we want to think about is what are we um, going to do with what we read? Um, and that is going to shape our strategies as well. The other thing, uh, thing you want to think about is what is your background um, in whatever the piece is about. If we're reading something that the subject is entirely new to us, that's going to be require different strategies than something that we really maybe know a lot about already. So again, another reason to adjust your strategies there. Um, we also want to think about what challenges might we experience uh, in reading this. So is that challenge, one of those challenges going to be that we don't have much background? Are we going to face a language hurdle? Um, are we going to face a time issue? Are we going to face um, a technical language issue, uh, et cetera? So that's another way to think about it. Um, the other thing that we want to think about is how much time and focus do we want to put into this piece? Is this something that is really important to read um, that we're going to spend a lot of time on? Or is it something that is really just something that we're reading just to get the gist of something or to check out whether we want to read it more or we just need a quick answer? And finally, you want to think about what tools do you have at your disposal to help you out? Um, are you going to annotate? How are you going to annotate? Are you going to read this on screen? Are you going to read this on print? If it's maybe something that you want to read really quickly just to get a main idea, reading on screen and not annotating might be a fine strategy. Um, however, if it's something that you're going to be maybe using a lot, writing a paper on, you really need to pay attention to the language and the complexity of the piece, maybe you want to print that out, um, annotate that on paper. Maybe you want to use a screen annotation software. So again, these decisions are all up to you, but the point being that you um, want to think about what you your investment in so that you can begin to read with a little bit more intention and not go on autopilot. So now that you've thought about kind of you know, what you're doing and what is important for you for the text, then you want to think about the text itself. Um, and the text, I mean text here, kind of any uh, piece of writing. So the first thing that you want to think about here is what is the type of text? Um, and here you want to think about the genre and the mode. So we're not going to read a newspaper article the same way that we're going to read um, an hour-long news documentary about it. That's going to require different strategies of reading um, 
you know, in relationship to the tools that we're using and our focus and what we're actually looking for. So one of the things that's important about being able to think about the type of the text is that if we understand the type of the text a little bit more, it's going to help us read it a little bit easier. We're going to know where to go for the main ideas, um, where to go if we're struggling, et cetera. The other thing that you want to think about is the writer. Um, or the writers of the text. Who is producing this text? Um, and this is going to kind of let us know if they've written a lot of things on this subject, what is their expertise on the subject, what else have they written, um, a little bit about their background is going to help us understand the main point of their text or what we want to achieve from it a little bit more. And again, that doesn't really take that long, right? We just have, we can just Google that to see who is this writer, what is their background, that's going to help us get what we need from the text a little bit more. Uh, same thing with the audience. So we want to think about who is the intended audience for this piece. And I think this matters a lot when we're dealing with academic research. And one of the things that students um, often find frustrating is that they're looking at um, things uh, like peer-reviewed articles that are written by academics for academics, and they're saying like, oh wow, this is really hard, this is really difficult. Well, of course it is, because you are not in the audience. You don't have the background of that audience, you don't have the expertise of that audience, and in a sense, that's not written for you. Of course, you can read it, um, and sometimes you will be encouraged to read it or uh, assigned to read it, but ultimately, it's actually written for other experts in the field. So if you're realizing that, that's going to tell you why it's difficult, um, and you're going to use a different set of strategies to figure out who is the audience audience here. Finally, you want to think about the context. Um, and here, when we're thinking about the context, we want to think about things like, when was this written? How is this related to other texts? Because remember, everything um, in the digital world is networked with each other. So we can think, how is this connected to other texts? And that's going to help us understand the main point and get a little bit more of the text. We might think about the time period it was written um, or how it relates to prior discourse. So all of these things uh, are really going to help you kind of adjust your reading strategies. And that's really kind of where where you're going here is that you want to adjust your strategies based on these criteria. And hopefully what that's going to get you to do is to read with a little bit more intention, to not simply just go on autopilot and read like you do, because laying all of this out, even in your mind or on a piece of paper, is really only going to take a minute or two. And I guarantee you that that's going to actually save you time because you're going to be way more efficient in the reading process and get more out of it than you would have if you just kind of went on autopilot and not thought about it. So after you've thought about the strategies you're going to use and thought about and set your intentions in relationship to the text for how you're reading, uh, the second thing that you want to do is to adjust your focus. So what I mean by adjust your focus is we could take all of the different types of reading, and there's many, many, many different types of reading, and we can divide them um, into kind of uh, two different categories. One is reading for form. One is reading for content. So you're probably used to uh, reading for content. Um, that is kind of in the typical high school English class where you're reading a novel, you're really kind of looking at kind of what is the meaning of the novel. Um, and so when we're looking for content, really what we're looking at is what it says. It's kind of what is essentially the content of the piece. What does the piece say? So when we're reading for content, we're often looking for kind of ideas, um, information, um, and we're looking for meaning of the text. However, when we're looking for form or if we're reading for form, we're looking at how it says it. So you're probably not maybe as used to thinking about form um, and reading for form. But when we're reading for form, we're actually looking at how is a piece put together? Um, how is it written? And this could be really useful when we want to learn how something is written or how it's put together. So if we are trying to write in a new situation, um, a good way of writing something new is to look at what is the form? How have other people met that situation? So this could be actually really good good for writers. Now, ultimately, what we actually want to do is not read for one or the other. 
we ultimately want to read um, thinking about the relationship between them, because it's the relationship between them that often really matters, right? How does the content affect the form? How does the form affect the content? And really, there's a whole kind of giant part of the university called the humanities that spends a lot of time thinking about this. What is the relationship between what our ideas are and what language is, between what we write and the ideas in our world? How we write things, um, how the world is shaped, ver um, how does that actually shape what we think about the world? So um, we're going to do both of these readings through in the class. And the other thing I think about them is not so much a binary choice. Um, it's really a matter of where we put our focus. But we can actually read for both at the same time. It's almost like a scale. We could read mostly for content, or we could read mostly for form. But actually, we can read for both at the same time as well, which is kind of neat. Um, the th second thing that we want to do um, is or excuse me, the third thing that we want to do is adjust the scale at what we're reading. So again, there are a bunch of different um, ways of reading. Um, and so we could think about kind of how much are we going to uh, focus on it, right? I like to think about it as almost like a microscope. So um, on one level, we can read closely. Right, and we call this close reading. And close reading is, again, something that we often kind of do with a novel um, or um, you know, a kind of long, complicated piece. And when we're close reading, imagine kind of this is just one text. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time on that text, and we're going to read fairly deeply. And we're just going to look at that text. We're going to spend, um, it, it's maybe a kind of complex text. We're spending a lot of time. And this way of reading is really good for a few things. Right? It's really good for complex ideas. Um, it's also um, good for analysis, right? So if we are reading um, a creative text and trying to figure out what the meaning is, spending a lot of time kind of analyzing it and analyzing our relationship to it. Um, and so it's often used a lot for um, um, uh, literary text or other creative text, um, really because it helps us if we're really working on kind of meaning um, or the artistry of one text. So another way of reading, um, kind of uh, the opposite side of that, and just like form and content, this is a scale um, as well, is that is um, distant reading. So when we're doing distant reading, we're almost kind of doing the reverse of close reading. And we're going to be looking at many documents. And we're not going to be looking at these documents as intently. We're not going to be spending as much time. We're only really going to spend a little bit of time analyzing each of these documents. And so what that's going to do is allow us to survey a lot of documents um, by only spending a little bit of time on them. And this way of reading can be really good for actually kind of understanding a main point or understanding context. Right? If we want to know what a lot of people think on a subject, so this is obviously something that's going to help when we're researching. If we want to understand what does the field of biology think about the idea of an ecosystem, rather than just looking at one piece um, from that field, we could look Look at several pieces, um, you know, five, six, hundreds of them, uh, to see well, how do do people in uh, uh, biology, um, how do they talk about ecosystems? So really, the main thing, as opposed to analysis here, is really kind of looking at synthesis, um, and that is really going to help us kind of tie different pieces together, right? So we're what we're doing is tying different pieces from different. Um, text together to actually come up with the idea rather than spending on one uh, text. And actually, in the digital world, we have a lot of really amazing tools to allow us to look at many, many, many different texts, right? especially kind of computational tools or things like hashtags. right? So rather than understanding kind of one person's account of um, something with a hashtag, we could actually look at millions and millions of people and do a distant reading and see, well, what do millions and millions people, uh, people think about this hashtag, for instance? So um, the other thing that this is really good for is verifying information um, and when you're doing research. Because it's taking a, a larger view, looking at many different examples. And again, it doesn't necessarily take more time, because you're not going in depth with each one. You're actually spending less time on each one, because you're more concerned how the texts relate to each other. 
So when we put those two strategies together, right, adjusting our focus and adjusting our attention, we kind of see something like this. And this shows us that there are kind of many different ways of reading. So on this axis, we kind of have the form and the content. On this axis, um, we have the kind of close or distant. And again, both of these are a scale, so we can kind of read anywhere along these scales. But I like to think about it um, as like kind of these quadrants to figure out where we might read. So let's maybe start with uh, this quadrant, close um, and reading, close reading for content. And this is really going to be the thing that is going to be where we're kind of looking for meaning or looking for ideas in one text. So this is going to be really good to use on complex texts in any mode, really, um, especially ones that we're going to be spending a lot of time on, right? And so we really want to be looking at um, things of analysis. So, so if we're writing about a text, um, if we are going to be responding to a text, if we really want to kind of analyze a text deeply, this is going to be where we're going to look at. We're going to look at one text and we're going to be reading it for content. Um, if we maybe want to understand how does that text actually, maybe it's a really good text, and we want to understand what makes it a good text, um, we can really think about here, um, you know, like what makes it a good text. Um, So, for example, right, um, we have a, um, um, a meme, for instance, right, and we want to understand why is this meme a good meme, right? Why, why um, does it go viral? Why does it hit people? Well, we could look at that through content. We can say, what is the content? We can analyze that. We could also look at it to say, like, well, actually, how the meme is put together. How does it reference? How does it remix other elements? Um, so here, right, we want to think about what makes something good by looking at how it's put together. And this could be really good if we're trying to write something on our own and we have a really good example of what um, a quality piece of work in that genre is. So um, if we're reading for distant and we're reading for content, um, and here, this is really kind of the area of synthesis, this is actually a really great quadrant for thinking about research. Why? Because when we're doing research, we're not generally just relying on one source, right? We're often relying on many sources because we want to understand what multiple people think. Because if multiple people think something or have proven something, that is going to be stronger knowledge. And that's often what we're looking for when we're doing a research project. So this is going to be really great for verifying ideas. Um, and remember, this is the province of synthesis. This is going to allow us to see um, how a text fits into context. It's going to let us see the context around the text. It's also going to allow us to see things like um, you know, what social groups think, what kind of large social trends, anything that you could really look at by looking at multiple different examples of something rather than just one. Um, and finally, um, and this is actually a really important quadrant that you might not have too much experience with, is reading distantly um, for form. And really, it, this is the best for understanding a genre. So of course we can understand a genre this way um, by looking at how one piece is put together. But it's going to be much stronger if we looked at how multiple pieces are fit together. So if we are, for example, trying to write um, our own meme and we want this to make it a good meme, we want to make it a good meme, what we can do is to look at several different examples of memes, right? So maybe we could look at like a popular meme, like a SpongeBob meme, but then we could look at all of the different varieties of SpongeBob memes and think, all right, what are most SpongeBob memes do that make them effective? So as you can see here, that adjusting these reading strategies for different purposes or different situations that you're in is going to be really helpful. And I want to you know, encourage you to, um, uh, to remember that this is on a scale, right? So it's not necessarily an either or. We could actually read for genre and um, at the same time that we're trying to verify information and do synthesis. Um, we could think about how one text is put together and how that relates to how other texts are put together. We can definitely think about how the form of a text relates to its content. So we can you know, work at kind of multiple different levels um, here. So this is why I kind of have it charted out this way, because we can maybe have our reading here, we could 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 have our reading here, etc. Um, and so it's a matter of kind of adjusting that um, focus and attention by really thinking about what is the intention for your reading. Um, so I really want to encourage you not just to kind of go on autopilot. Throughout this course, we're going to have lots of different texts in multiple different um, genres and modes. You're going to be asked to do different things with them. And I would like you to kind 
kind of practice out these reading strategies. So think about it this way as you're reading. Am I reading this for form? Am I reading this for content? Am I reading this closely? Am I reading this um, um, you know, distantly? What do I need to do to kind of meet this situation? So hopefully that is useful for you, um, and I will see you next time, writers.